Have you been trusting God for something big? Do you wish to have a quick answer to the earnest desires of your heart? Do you know that when God wants to do something big for you, there are signs that usually tell? Whether you are trusting God for promotion, you want God to give you a child, get a landed property, apply for a grant, or a financial breakthrough. God is able and willing to do that and more for you. In this video, you will see the seven signs that God will do something big for you. Make sure you watch till the end. If you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel yet, please do so now for more inspirational and illuminating videos. You can also click on the notification bell to be notified whenever new videos are posted. Ephesians 3, 20 says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. This scripture is an amazing eye-opener. It hints that there is nothing too big that God cannot do. That thing that looks so big in your heart and imagination is not so big before God. This is because He is the God of all flesh, and there is nothing too big for Him to do. Especially when it comes to matters that concern you as His child, He will go all out to do that big thing for you. How do you know that God will do something big for you? Let's delve into the signs one after the other. One significant sign that God is about to do something big for you is when you get angelic visitation. You might be thinking, does people still see or welcome angels in this present day and age? Absolutely yes. It could be physical in human forms or in dreams. Angels of God are usually sent on errands by God to bear good tidings. God's angels are rarely seen in the realm of men except when there is something special that God wants them to do. When God wants to do something big for you, He will send His angels to share the good tidings with you. In Genesis, we see the story of Abraham and Sarah, who got angelic visitation. They had been married for several years, but Sarah could not give birth to a child. But despite this, they faithfully served God and followed Him. One day, as they continued their daily business, three angels visited them and assured them that in a year, Sarah would give birth to a child. This was strange news because Sarah was past the age for childbirth. By biological and medical reasoning, she had no business with childbirth anymore. But God, in His sovereign power, chose to change the order of nature so that a 90-year-old woman was able to conceive and deliver safely. If like Sarah, you are trusting God for a child and have been waiting for several years. Do not lose hope. God is still able to give you your big answer by giving you your child. He did it for Hannah, Elizabeth, and many other people who have faith in Him. Is it only Abraham and Sarah who got something big from God after they experienced an angelic visitation? No. There are several others but the story of Mary stands out significantly amongst the rest, and why not? She birthed the Savior of the world. So here is the Bible verse you can engage. Luke 1, 26-28 says, 26 in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, 27 to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. 28 The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you, who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was not even expecting anything special, but following this angelic visitation, she became pregnant with the Savior of the world. This is by far the biggest thing that God has done, not just for Mary but for the whole world. If you are not familiar with the storyline, then the summary is that Mary became the mother to the Savior, who came to die for the sins of the whole world. After Mary gave birth to the Savior, some wise men also received angelic visitation, witnessing to them God's big news, the birth of the Savior. The Savior died and was resurrected so that God can save every willing person from their sins and the consequences and make them His children. If you are listening to this right now and you are yet to receive Jesus into your life, you are missing God's biggest gift for you. But it is not too late to receive this gift from God. 
All you need to do is believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins and accept him as your Lord and Savior. Zechariah and Elizabeth, Jacob, Joshua, and Lot, to mention a few, received angelic visitations. After each visitation, they all received something big from God. So, know that whenever you receive an angelic visitation, it is a sign that God is about to do something big for you. Another sign that God will do something big for you is granting you an audience before honorable men through your gift. The big mistake that some people make is that they only pray to God for big things without living a life worthy of big things. You will agree that no matter how much a father loves a child, he will not grant his birthday wish of getting a car at 10. He does this to protect the child from abuse and accidents. That is the same way God will not do some big things for you if you do not have what it takes to handle them. That is why if you trust God for a promotion at work or if you want him to grant you access to people in honorable positions, he will usually not grant your request until you have proven yourself worthy of attaining such a feat. Proverbs 22, 29 says, Do you see someone skilled in their work? They will serve before kings. They will not serve before officials of low rank. Beloved, the easiest way to make God answer your prayer promotion and favor is when you give due diligence to honing your skills. When you gain expertise in what you do, you can put to good use whatever promotion God gives you. Many people receive big things from God through the deployment of their gifts, and you can draw inspiration from them. Joseph was a slave who had practiced interpreting dreams. He did that for his fellow prisoners, and the dream was fulfilled just in tone with his accurate interpretation. Unknown to Joseph, this was what God would use to grant him an audience before the king. When the king had a dream that no one could interpret, it was then that the chief butler remembered Joseph as someone who could interpret dreams. It was this ability to interpret dreams that gave Joseph an audience before the king. Have you wondered what Joseph's fate would have been if he had been unable to interpret the dream? The king could have given him a death sentence. But because Joseph could live up to his recommendation, God used it as an avenue to bring Joseph to the throne and the Pharaoh's right-hand man. Are you trusting God for something big in your job or career, then paying the sacrifice of building your expertise? God will someday grant you an audience before men of great influence who will help advance your course. David was another man who received something big from God through his shepherd skills. He came to the battlefield to give his brothers food. But he saw an opportunity to deploy his skills and win the battle against the Philistines. When he went before King Saul, Saul asked him what qualifications he had to face Goliath, the giant. In his defense, he told the king that as a shepherd boy, he killed a lion and a bear that tried to attack his father's sheep. This made Saul give him the benefit of the doubt to try his skill on Goliath. And the rest is history, as David eventually succeeded Saul as the king of Israel. Beloved, another way to know God is about to do something big for you is when you have divine encounters. This encounter can either be as spectacular as hearing God's audible voice or as simple as meeting a man on the street. What makes it divine, however, is that it is God orchestrated. And the evidence that follows after such an encounter will always bear in it the fingerprint of God. You can have this encounter in the place of prayer as Solomon did. He was newly appointed king of Israel after David, his father. So. He went before God to make a request. Solomon's request was not for something superficial. He asked God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to lead the people. God was pleased with this heart of service that Solomon came with, and God decided to do something big for him beyond his request. God told him that besides what he had requested, he would get so much wealth that nobody on earth had ever had. This goes to show that when you trust God with your life and your work, He will always bring something big out of it. Another inspiring story of divine encounter is the one recorded in Acts 8, 26-28, which says, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, 
and important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandake, which means Queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way, home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. This story is profound because it shows how God moves most unusually. This eunuch was all alone by himself, trying to understand the scriptures he was reading, but to no avail. But because God saw the eagerness and earnestness of his heart, he sent Philip to meet up with him. Philip was able to expound the scriptures to this eunuch, which made him understand. This divine encounter made the eunuch receive the biggest gift ever, as was mentioned in the earlier part of this video. He received Jesus Christ and became a child of God. Likewise, the encounter the cripple at the pool of Bethsaida had with Jesus was quite significant. Needless to say, no one who encounters Jesus remains the same. This crippled man had been on that spot for 38 years without help. But when Jesus met him, he received a big gift from God, which is supernatural healing. You will also know God will do something big for you when you get an unusual instruction that will change your life. Naaman was trusting God for something big, the healing of his leprosy, but all he got was an unusual instruction from God for Elisha. It was after obeying this instruction that he received his healing. Paul was also someone who received an unusual instruction from God. He was, before the time, a wicked man whose life was dedicated to making life hard and unbearable for believers. But on that fateful day, as he was heading to Damascus to carry out his evil intentions, God arrested him by his shining glory, and he lost sight. After a few conversations, God instructed him to go to a man named Ananias in Damascus, who would tell him what to do. This instruction opened the door of big things for Paul as he was saved and received a restoration of sight. Elijah also unusually instructed the widow of Zarephath. She gave her last meal to Elijah, and God blessed her bountifully so she would never lack it again. Beloved, it takes faith to walk with God. Some instructions that God will give to you might not make sense to the human mind, but let your trust remain firm in God and do whatever He has instructed you to do. This is a sign that He will do something big for you. Another sign that shows God is about to do something big for you is that He sends help in the least expected way. In Exodus 2, 1-10, you will find an intriguing story about the birth of Moses. Moses was born when the king of Egypt gave a decree that every newly born male child should be thrown into the river to die. His parents could no longer continue to hide him after three months. So the mother wrapped him in a basket and instructed her daughter to take him to the river. As God would have it, Pharaoh's daughter came to bathe at the river around that time, and she found this cute boy left to himself in the river. Her heart went out to him, and she decided to keep the child despite knowing that he was a Hebrew and should be killed. Eventually, Moses' mother was paid by Pharaoh's daughter to nurse her son, and Moses' life was preserved from death. This is to let you know that when God wants to do something big for you, He can send help to you from the most unlikely source. Trust Him. A clear vision and purpose are another sign that God is about to do something big for you. No matter how comfortable your life may be at the moment, if you do not have a clear vision of what you are supposed to do with your life, then you have not started living. It is a big deal to get clarity of vision and purpose because it will help you channel the course of your life in the right direction. Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king in a strange land, but he was also a slave. He probably thought he was having the best life, having to stand before the king every day until God put a burden in his heart for Jerusalem. Upon receiving this vision, he sought an audience with the king and asked for leave to return to his home country to rebuild it. As God would have it, the king did not only set him free as a slave but also gave him plenty of resources and materials that would be needed for the work. Now, this is something huge coming from a king to a mere slave. The last sign God will show you when he wants to do something for you is that you will get a new opportunity. You must have heard the quote opportunity comes but once severally. Do you know that your case is different? 
And it doesn't matter if you have used up the opportunities you had, God will grant you new opportunities. When you see this, it is a sign that God will do something big for you. Let us pray. Father, I thank you today because I have the privilege to hear these words. I am grateful to serve a very big God who does big things. Thank you because you can do exceedingly above all I ask or think. And even as I pray to you now, you will do above my requests. Grant me the grace to come to a deeper understanding of all these signs discussed in this video. Let me know when you are communicating to me through any of these signs and help me to align myself accordingly. Jesus, I ask for the grace to believe totally in you and all that you have done for me. I want to faithfully live for you and serve you with my life. I want to have a living relationship with you. Hold me by the hands and lead me through life's journey. I know you have endowed me with a unique gift. Help me. Lord, to cultivate my gift for utmost productivity so that I will not lose out on the big things that you are preparing for me. Let my gift make way for me before kings and honorable men. Lord, I also want to have divine encounters. Let my covenant helpers locate me and help me. I receive grace to discern them as you bring them my way. Grant me the wisdom to relate well with them so I don't lose the blessings you have for me through them. Lord, as you did for Moses, pave the way for me in the heart of men so they will be willing to help me even in the most unlikely situation. I ask for the spirit of obedience to obey all your instructions. I also ask that my heart be established in faith so that whatever you ask me to do, I will obey without doubt or worry. Let my vision become clear so I will not labor like a fool and help me enjoy new opportunities in all the ramifications of my life. Help me to experience all the big things that you have for me. And as you do that for me, let me be able to share with others. Thank you for hearing me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you were blessed to watch this video, kindly subscribe, like, and share.